What's up, Strong Nation? It's nine o'clock, getting a late start at the right spot. I stopped at an area further down the shoreline, saw a bunch of pelicans that were working a bunch of bait. There just turned out to not be any fish on them. I walked around and just really caught ladyfish for about an hour and a half, hoping I would find a redfish. I did get one trout, but I'm just gonna completely cut this out of the report because I think this is where I'm gonna find the fish. I know that there's some schooling redfish, so that's the big target right now, especially being a little later in the day. I think my window for trout is pretty much gone. So I'm gonna get on the shoreline, look up shallow, see if I can't find some redfish that are harassing some mullet. Hopefully I'll run into a school, worst case, Maybe I'll find some black drum that are tailing up shallow that I can convince to eat with some small paddle tails. So I'm gonna jump in and see what I can find here. All right, got the 2.0 on. Hopefully this will convince some fish to eat. Looks like we've got some activity right over there. So let's get in and start casting at that. There we go. That is nice. That was right in that little, what do we got here? Doing some running. Okay, got us a redfish, I think. Yeah, well, there we go. Came to the right spot. Yeah, I just got out of the boat right there. Saw that, uh, that bunch of bait working and uh, threw pretty much right into it. I think now with, uh, whoo, come on, Bo. I think now, as it's starting to kind of warm up, they're gonna slide up shallow into some of this calmer water and get right up on all this bait. Now, I stopped at the last cove because there was a bunch of birds, uh, similar similar type of uh, you know wind protection, but it did not have the wind blowing directly into it like this shoreline did last night. Man, he got all up on that slam shady. That's like, ooh, come here, bud. That's a nice red right there. Yeah, that Slam Shady is, uh, you can tell he wanted that for sure. That's definitely a nice red to start the day though. I, uh, I don't usually start at nine. I like getting an early start, but you know, sometimes you gotta stop and try new areas. They got him unhooked and he's back quick, but yeah, all these birds that you're seeing, that's what made me stop at the last spot. But big difference that we've got here is that this shoreline had the wind blowing into it and the last one did not, but I saw the birds and I went, you know, look at this guy going down right now. That's exactly what you're looking for. So when you see that happening, these birds that are working on all this bait, those redfish are pushing all that bait to the surface. And you've got birds working in unison with the redfish. And it's a lot easier to see the birds than it is to see the reds, especially in dirty water like we've got today. But I just like to use white, regardless of whether it's clean water or dirty water. I find it just is a good color that is always gonna show up. You guys can see it right there. Redfish are gonna have a tough time missing that. Now, knowing that these fish were likely going to be responding well to that white, I wanted to conduct a little bit of an experiment. About every 10 or 15 minutes, I'd change the size of the lure to try and see what was going to attract the most strikes, a bigger paddle tail or a smaller paddle tail. And here are the results profiles until I figured out what the fish wanted most. There he is. Alrighty. A little bit deeper. That was on the bomber. It's a stop and go retrieve. I'm trying to figure out what these fish want. I can't figure out. This is a smaller one that took the bomber too. I keep seeing varied sizes of redfish. Oh, that one's got a little bit of a funky tail there. I keep seeing varied sizes of redfish. That looks like it was a little bit of a reaction strike. The last one, I was rolling it really slow. Woo! And uh, that last one thumped it really hard. That one looked like it was a little bit more of a reaction strike on the drop. So maybe I'll just keep trying that. I might play around with these size profiles again, but they seem to be liking the white. That's fine. but. I feel like there's a lot more fish and I really just need to dial in on what they want. Oh, he was right there. I watched him try and hit it. Darn it. It looked like a good red. Oh, 
Oh, goodness gracious, I missed him. Nope, still got him. Uh, oh, it's a trout, I think. Is it a trout? What do we got here? Yeah, decent trout. I was throwing a little bit deeper. Yeah, that's not bad right there. For summer, sure. I'll take that. Especially this late in the day. But he crushed that bomber. I was about to switch from the bomber to the 2.0 because I think the reds might be dialed in. <laughs> Thank you for that. On smaller mullet. But uh, that was nice to see that trout grab that. I still think I'm going to switch to the 2.0 though. Oh yeah, there we go. That was immediate. Uh, yep, there he is. I don't think it's a very big redfish, but I saw a little bit of a uh, saw a little bit of action going on. Some nervous water, and lo and behold, got a nice little redfish. Come here, Bubba. That was on the 2.0 made that switch right after that last trout as we're getting closer to this drain here the activity seems to be picking up not only from predators we got a trout like two casts before this the uh the bait is also a little bit more prevalent at the drain here if this guy will let me land him so i'm hoping that with more bait we're gonna run into more redfish maybe more trout i'd love to find a flounder i haven't caught a flounder in a minute but we're getting to that time of year when they start kind of moving, getting active again. No monster, but uh, nice to add another red to the board. Getting a little bit more of a pattern here. That was a pretty constant retrieve. I mean, it hit almost right when it touched the water. But I think the 2.0 is going to be the ticket. If I find that I'm only catching small fish, I might bump it up. Uh, even though the big fish came on the 2.0. But... I don't know what's an outlier quite yet. Oh my goodness. Feels like a, another small red. Well, I think fair to say here that the 2.0 is working on these, uh, these kind of smaller schooler reds. Ooh, hello. Yeah, about the same size as the last one. Maybe even a little smaller. Oh, Bubba. 2.0 for the win again. Ooh, quick release. So as it was starting to get a little bit later in the day, the temperature was picking up. I realized that the area I was fishing in had absolutely no water movement. And I really needed to come up with a plan to get back on fish fast. One thing I just noticed is right by my boat there's a lot of moving water you can actually see there's a bunch of jumping bait too lots of blowing up over there and uh i think where i'm at you can see there's absolutely no wind no water movement it's getting pretty hot now i'm sweating and i wonder if these fish are gravitating towards just some slightly cooler water because i found a couple of them up shallow and i'm wondering if when i get back to my boat i'm not going to find fish on the other side where you can see there's a lot of water movement this side is pretty much completely protected from the wind, but there is a little bit of, you know, it looks like wind current over that way. So I'm gonna make my way towards that. Still gonna keep fan casting, but I've got a feeling that I'm gonna find some more fish closer to my boat, probably right on the other side. I'm gonna start wading that way when I get to it. So thankfully my theory was right. As soon as I made it over to the area that had a little bit more wind blowing, there was a lot more life, a lot more activity, but the water was a bit dirtier. So I switched over to a spoon. The only bad thing about the heat that I was experiencing was it actually overheated my GoPro, as you'll see right there. Thankfully I pulled my phone out after I hooked up with this first fish, but you'll actually hear it that it seems like the audio still worked. Not gonna be able to see the hookup, unfortunately though. Oh, I just watched him eat. That was awesome. So unfortunately, my GoPro died, but I managed to get another red on a gold spoon. I uh, figured with the dirtier water, a little windier conditions, 
that uh, the spoon might work. And luckily, it did. So with the GoPro overheated, it was about time for me to head back. Thankfully, I managed to pick up this last red on that spoon, but definitely a fun day of testing different lure sizes. But I do have a lot more to share on this report. If you want to view the full inside report, you're going to go to saltstrong.com. Lots of great information there. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know we're the number one online fishing club out there because we guarantee we're going to help you catch more fish with our new Smart Fishing Spots app. Tons of great tips. We're going to help you save money on tackle and lures, and you're going to make friends really fast or it's free. So thank you again so much for watching, and we hope to see you 